I'm Sebastian St. James. Are you losing money in the bank? There is a problem with the money that you've got in the bank right now, and that it's been insidiously eaten away by inflation. You're actually becoming poorer over time because the rate of inflation is actually higher than the feeble interest which your bank is giving you. But is that actually true? It's certainly what you've been told. In this video, I will give you the final verdict. Does your money in the bank lose real value or does it actually make a little bit above inflation? This is inflation in Australia over the last 62.7 years. And this is a high interest savings account interest rate over the last 41 years. So that's the raw data. There is a myth about your bank I need to bust. This is Mr. Steve OC and here's one of my channel members. He may not look like this in real life, but today he does. Steve Banks with Fairbank. Oh, that's an interesting bank. This is Dan Spear and here's one of my channel members. Dan is the CEO of Fairbank. I know, prestigious. Steve believes that Fairbank compensates him for any increase in inflation and it goes something like this. Margaret, Margaret, can you get me the latest CPI figures from the Reserve Bank of Australia? Yes, thank you. Inflation in Australia rises to 6.8% annually, defying expectations. So Fairbank looks at the figures. Our rate at the moment, 5%. Inflation, 6.8%. We need to increase our rates on our bank accounts by 1.8%. Because after all, it's only fair that your money in the bank should keep pace with inflation. But that's not how banks work. And as a result, Dan has been fired from his position as CEO of Fairbank. Ah, oh, it was a short but honourable career. This is Knox TFO and here's one of my channel members. He may not look like that in real life, but today he does. Knox is the new CEO of Fairbank. Oh, he's the replacement. This is how a real bank operates. Margaret, Margaret, can you get me the figures on next month's projected loans? Well, the projected loans for July, the shortfall, what we don't have money to cover right now is $1.2 billion. Oh no, a shortfall. Wherever will we find the money? Margaret, who's desperate to lend money these days? Do a worldwide search and get me the cheapest rates. Oh, the Bank of India at the moment will lend me up to $500 million at 3% interest. Well, that's pretty cheap. The Congo Bank will lend me $400 million at 3.2% interest. And the shortfall, oh no, $300 million. So how does Knox fill this shortfall? He turns to Fairbank's customers, customers like Steve, who bank at Fairbank. Steve has a secret. He has a hidden stash of money he keeps with another bank. Some say it's money he's keeping from his wife that he spends on his mistress, but those rumours have never been proven. Right now, Steve has $50,000 at both Fairbank and Combank, and they're both earning 5%. But wait, Fairbank is about to increase their interest rate to 5.1%. Steve wants the best rate, so he empties his account at Combank and puts it all in Fairbank. Because of Steve and people like him, Fairbank has made up all their shortfall in funding. Based on what you've learned about how real banks operate, there's no inherent reason why the bank interest rate that you get should automatically keep up with inflation. It might, but it really just comes down to how much money your bank needs and how much it has to pay to get that money. After all, your bank is a business. It's not a charity. Well, if that's how it works, is there any link at all between my bank account interest rate and inflation? This is inflation in Australia versus the high interest savings account interest rate over the last one year. These figures are right up to date. At the top in blue, we find it's actually CPI. Oh, that's so much higher than my bank account, which is in red. Yes, that's right. You'll notice back in April that basically the bank interest was paying virtually nothing and slowly over time it's been staggering up. But of course, inflation already shot up. Too little, too late bank account. Really, this graph should not come as a shock to you. Inflation in Australia rises to 6.8%. And here are the latest figures that banks are offering on their high interest savings account. 4.8%, 4.6%, nothing like 6.8%, nowhere near. So right now, your money in the bank is savagely being eaten away by inflation. Over the last one year, CPI has averaged 6.66%, your high interest savings account interest rate 2.03%. That's like 4.5% difference. Wow, that is massive. Why is there such a big gap there? 
Back in March 15, it was a quarter of a percent if you had your money in the bank and yet inflation was clearly over 5%. That's ridiculously different. Your bank account interest is influenced by the rates set by the RBA. The Reserve Bank of Australia meets on the Tuesday of every month except for January when they take the month off. Well, that's nice for them. So I hope the economy goes smoothly in January. What they do is they look at what's going on with inflation. The Reserve Bank does not like to act very fast because it's a bad look for them every time they raise rates. So what they do, they see the inflation go up and they say, well, let it sit for a few months. Maybe it will take care of itself. So by the time they come to raise the cash rate, inflation has already been taking off for several months. Hence, you end up with disparity like this, a quarter of a percent versus 5.1 percent. There is a mathematical formula called the Pearson Correlation Coefficient that allows us to compare two sets of numbers, in this case, your bank account interest versus inflation, to see how correlated those figures really are. The correlation between CPI and what the bank is paying you is actually 82 percent. 82 percent is actually a fairly strong correlation. Well, that's for this year, at least. But as you're about to discover, the correlation between inflation and what your bank pays you is about to dramatically change. Over the last two years, inflation versus high interest savings accounts in Australia, I'm just seeing more bad news. Inflation has been well above our bank account interest. Over those two years, inflation has averaged 4.97%. Your bank interest, 1.19%. Oh, I don't even know why I bother putting my money in the bank for that. And the correlation is 76.5%. Okay, so it's starting to come off. Over three years, oh, did I see bank account interest, which is in red, above inflation, which is in blue? Yes, briefly there. Back in July 2020, oh, I so much want to go back to those days. Although I'm not looking forward to wearing the masks and being locked in my house. Over three years, inflation, 3.71%. Bank interest is 1.07%. Okay, so we lost out again. The correlation is 63.2%. Okay, well, that's really coming down now. This is interesting because generally figures that should be correlated get more correlated over time. If I want to compare, say, the share market in Australia to the share market in the US over just this year, well, there could be big differences. But if I take that over a longer period of time, several years, the correlation gets closer and closer. Here, yeah, take a look. This is the S&P 500 total return, which means including dividends, versus the ASX 200 total return, dividends, plus franking credits over that same three year period. Visually, I can tell that those lines actually do approximate each other, but what does the math say? It says the correlation is 84.7%, which is pretty high. Compare that over the same period between inflation and your high interest savings account at 63.2%. Yeah, it starts to show you just how disconnected interest rates and inflation really are. This is inflation versus your money in the bank over the last five years. So a few years ago, it looks like interest rates and inflation were more or less the same. They just took it in turns. That was a vastly different time, wasn't it? Over that five years, CPI averaged 2.97%. Your interest rate averaged 1.41%. That's still pretty pathetic. The correlation, oh dear, it's dropped even more. 39.1%. Getting worse as time goes on, which is rather incredible. So if up till now you've been thinking there is a strong link between inflation and the interest rate I get in the bank, I hope I've disabused you of that belief. So, when I'm talking about inflation versus bank account interest, exactly what am I comparing here? Well, inflation is measured by CPI. That's a figure given out by the ABS. You can see the target rate that the Reserve Bank has set is between 2 and 3%. Who sets CPI? Is it some central government body? No, it's basically every time Woolworths decides to jack up their prices and your electricity company does exactly the same, that all feeds into CPI. So high interest savings account, of course they vary from bank to bank. The question is, where am I getting these figures from? Well, these come actually from the Reserve Bank of Australia and it comes as one great big spreadsheet, which looks like this. And specifically, they call it the Retail Deposit and Investment Rate Savings Account Banks Bonus. Notice that word bonus, that's very important. What do they mean by bonus interest? Oh, look at this. You can earn 4.85% carrot carrot. Okay, something to disclose there. Bonus interest if bonus criteria is met. Asterisk, asterisk. So asterisk, asterisk, how does this bonus interest even work? Well, normally the bank account only pays 0.05% interest. Yes, that's money under the bed level. 
only if you jump through their hoops, they'll take that up to 4.85%. So, what are the hoops I have to jump through? Simply deposit $1,000 into your linked everyday account from an external bank account and make five or more eligible transactions. Eligible transactions means through the debit card or credit card system. So if you're not actually having conditions on your account to get your bonus interest, the chances are you're actually getting paid less interest than you otherwise could be. Here is the high interest savings account versus inflation over the last 10 years. Now you know high interest savings account on my graph means with bonus interest. And what do we notice? Well on the left in red the bank account interest was way higher, well a little bit higher, than inflation. Hooray! Oh the good old days from 2014. Over those 10 years CPI averaged 2.46%. High interest savings account 2.18%. You're still going lower than the inflation, yes. And the correlation was 11.3%. Like, that's hardly correlated at all. So this is how correlation works. Positive correlation means that the figures are going up and down together. Zero means it's random, completely non-correlated. So 11.3% is closer to random, uncorrelated, than it is to actually being highly correlated. I know, it's just ridiculous, but that's what the math proves. Over the last 20 years. Wow, that is quite a graph, isn't it? In the earlier part, it looks as if high interest savings accounts were doing rather well. But of course, on the right, all that's been undone, hasn't it? Over 20 years, inflation has been 2.61%. Interest in the bank was getting 3.07%. Oh, hooray! Finally! Okay, what's the correlation? 21.9%. Yeah, okay, not a lot there. Oh, this is good news. If your money had been left in the bank for the last 20 years, in a Hydra savings account with bonus interest, you would have actually beaten inflation. Let me break that 20 years into two 10-year chunks to see when the good times and the bad times really were. This is the first 10 years. That's from 2003 to 2013. And in red, you can see actually bank interest was much better. Oh, that was a good decade. Take me back to then. Throughout that 10 years, inflation averaged 2.77%. Bank interest, 3.97%. Oh, I love that. The correlation, 40.9%. If we compare that now to the last 10 years, wow, massive difference. In those two 10-year periods, which ran consecutively, inflation was roughly around about the same amount, between 25 and 3%. But in the first 10 years, bank account interest was nearly 4%. In the next 10 years, no, closer to 2%. Well, that's nearly half. This is inflation versus money in the bank over the last 30 years. Wow, that is a long period of time. Over that 30 years, CPI averaged at 2.59%, money in the bank 3.14%, and the correlation 16.5%. Yeah, closer to random than actually being correlated. Which is extraordinary. 16% is so ridiculously uncorrelated. Let's compare that to shares between the US and Australia over that same 30 years. Instead of 16.5%, it's 85.9%. So, is CPI and bank interest correlated? Barely at all. So now it's time for the big reveal. All my data on one graph. This is inflation versus high interest savings account interest rate over the last 40.9 years. Wow. On the left, red, which is bank account interest, beat everything else. Oh, those good old days again. Over my entire data set of 40.9 years, inflation has averaged 3.13%. Money in the bank is 4.5%. Correlation is 57.4%. Now I'm going to take my entire data set and break it down into 10-year chunks to see if we can find a trend in what has been happening with bank account interest. In the last 10 years, 0 to 10. The winner is CPI, clearly at 2.46%. In the previous 10 years, the winner was bank account interest, 20 to 30 bank account interest, and 30 to 40 bank account interest, overall bank account interest. Take a look at the correlation. In red are the decades, we're talking long periods of time here, where CPI and your money in the bank were virtually uncorrelated. 7.98%, I mean, that's ridiculous. Only in one decade, between 30 and 40 years ago, would I say they were correlated, and they were at 96.5%. We've looked at all the data, so what are my conclusions? Over the last 40.9 years, money in a high interest savings account has beaten inflation. But over the last 10 years, money in a high interest savings account has lost to inflation. So the question is, 
What's going on with our interest rate in this decade? Why is it broken? Well, maybe it's because interest rates were so low for so long and then they shot up so quickly with inflation. And the rubber band effect, remember it takes a little while for your bank interest to catch up. CPI was actually minus 0.3% and then shot up immediately after. You might think impressive and possibly unique, except it's not. If I go back to the 1990s, there's a period of time which looks oddly similar. There's a sharp dip and CPI goes negative at 0.4%. And after that, there's a sharp rise up. Yeah, very similar looking, isn't it? If what's happening with CPI right now is not actually that unique, will your children look back on this decade and see it as the lost decade of bank account interest? I think undoubtedly they will. The question is, have we now fundamentally changed something about the interest rates that your banks are prepared to give you? Will this be from now on in, bank account interest will always be lower than inflation? Or will this just be a blip and it will correct itself over time? Well, that we'll have to see. My conclusion is the correlation between the return of a high interest savings account and inflation exists, but it is modest to weak. Did you know there's something that beats the bucket system in retirement? Well, what's the bucket system to start with and what beats it? Well, to find out, click here, or if you've seen that, click here.